Hello class, this is Miss Augustine. We are in Chapter 8 and we're talking about predicting reactions. This tutorial I call Double Replacement Reactions Part 2 because we're going to talk about the reactions in aqueous solution that will result in a precipitate and so we're going to talk about writing the ionic and net ionic equations. In a double replacement there are two ionic compounds and they react by exchanging their cations. So in my example here of A, B plus C, D, what's going to happen is the cations are going to swap places so that now A is with D and C is with B. And our example here, silver nitrate plus sodium chloride react to produce silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. And once we've written our two possible products, we always have to consult our solubility table. So in a double replacement, generally one of these things is true. One of the products is a precipitate. That's where we check our solubility table. One of the products is a gas. It bubbles out of the mixture. And if a gas were to form, it would probably be either hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, or um, carbon dioxide, you would recognize them. And the third situation is a product that forms as a molecular compound, and for our purposes it will usually be water. How will you know it's molecular? Because it's a nonmetal with a nonmetal. Now, in the case of a precipitate forming, the way we'll know that it's a product that's formed is we'll consult our solubility rules and we'll figure out if something insoluble has Formed. And for aqueous solutions, we have to remember many important reactions take place in water. In fact, just about everything that takes place in our body is water, in water because we are water-based, and that ionic compounds dissociate in aqueous solutions. So that means aqueous solutions contain the free cations and anions floating around. And in terms of biology, you can think about the electrolytes that you learned about in biology class that are so important in our bodies. So we need to learn how to write a complete ionic equation and that is the equation that shows the things that are dissolved as free ions. So here this reaction is showing the silver nitrate aqueous meaning it's in water, sodium chloride again aqueous meaning that it's in water, to produce silver chloride, and that is not soluble, insoluble, and our sodium nitrate. So to ionize this, we would make silver, Ag+, plus, and NO3-, minus, and then sodium chloride we would dissociate to Na+, plus and Cl-, minus. and then we notice here that the silver chloride is not ionized, and that's because it is insoluble. So it is a solid, the S here means solid, it has fallen to the bottom of our reaction vessel, it's no longer available dissolved as a free ion, and then our sodium and nitrate are free ions still because they are soluble. So now the complete ionic equation is the equation that can be simplified by eliminating ions that do not participate in the reaction. The ions that appear on both sides of the equation can be canceled out. Those ions that are not directly involved are typically referred to as the spectator ions. They're just sort of watching the reaction take place. And the net ionic equation that we will write shows the formation of the product, which may be a precipitate, as the example I just showed you, or it may be a gas or a molecular compound. So let's look at an example. Going back to the same reaction of silver nitrate with sodium chloride to produce silver chloride and sodium nitrate. To write the complete ionic equation, as in the previous slide, we're going to ionize silver and nitrate and sodium and chloride. And we're going to leave the silver chloride um, as a solid, and so we can't ionize it. It's not soluble anymore. And then we have our sodium and our nitrate ions. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to cancel out the nitrates because they didn't change. We can cancel out the sodiums because they didn't change. And that's going to lead us to our net ionic equation. And the net ionic equation will just show us 
the things that changed, the reaction that actually took place. So here I have my silver plus my chloride ion to form silver chloride. And the spectator ions are the ones that I crossed out up above, and that would be the nitrate ion and the sodium ion. And that leads to the net ionic equation. So the equation that indicates only those particles that actually take part in a reaction is the net ionic equation. And in the previous example, silver plus chloride ion yield silver chloride. So if a molecular compound or a gas was formed, your net ionic equation would show their formation as well. And that will lead us to example two. And here I have hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide to produce sodium chloride and water. Now, the complete ionic equation here is going to be hydrogen ion plus chloride ion plus sodium ion plus hydroxide ion to produce chloride ion plus sodium ion plus water. And we're going to cross out chloride ion, which didn't participate and sodium ion, which also didn't participate, and that's going to leave us with our molecular compound water. So removing those ions will lead us to our net ionic equation, where hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion produce water, a molecular substance. And so that means that our spectator ions in this case are sodium ion and chloride ion. So to summarize, in a double replacement reaction where you are writing a net ionic equation, you will first determine if a new product forms. So again, you're looking for the formation of a precipitate or a gas or a molecular substance. You're going to write an equation to show all of the ions and the product. And I wrote it as product here because it may be a precipitate, it may be a gas, and it may be a molecular substance and then you're going to cross out the ions that remain unchanged and finally write the net equation that shows the formation of your product. <clears throat> so that is all for now for this tutorial. More to follow. This is Miss Augustine signing off. I am going to show you if you heard snoring though this is my dog Maggie who was taking turns sleeping under my desk with my dog Tessie, who also sleeps under my desk and snores. I apologize for the snoring. Again, this is Ms. Augustine, signing off.